This is the DBX 707, and Aston Martin claims it's the supercar of performance SUVs. Today, we get to find out if it has what it takes to batter the Lamborghini Urus and Porsche Cayenne GT Turbo. Let's check it out. So what has Aston Martin done to its DBX 707 to give it, well, phenomenal levels of performance? Well, of course it starts underneath this ventilated bonnet. Now, like the regular DBX, this car runs a twin turbocharged four litre V8, except here it has an upgraded ECU and two bigger turbochargers that feature roller bearings. But forget all that. The important thing is this produces an extra 115 kilowatts and an extra 200 newton meters of torque, which raises total power output to 520 kilowatts and wait for this, 900 newton meters of torque. Monstrous figures. And this is a monstrously quick car. From 0 to 100 kilometers per hour, this thing takes just 3.3 seconds. 0 to 160 kilometers per hour, 7.4 seconds and a top speed, a top speed of more than 310 kilometers per hour. Aston Martin claims those performance figures match the very best in its class. And in some cases, this thing is actually quicker than the Porsche Cayenne GT Turbo, up to 160 kilometers per hour and from then on. Now to cope, it has significantly upgraded the Aero on the regular DBX. And let's talk about some of those changes because from the front, you might notice it has a completely new front end in it. Now, the reason for this is the 4-litre V8 twin turbo needed a whole lot of cooling. Aston Martin claimed this grille is actually around 27% bigger, but it's been clever. It's actually increased cooling by up to 80% by having these neat sort of double stacked radiators. Now, the other thing it has also done is there's some real useful aero aids. Now, because of things like these, um, these spats at the front here and this front splitter, it claims that it has reduced lift by up to 5% over the front axle. But even weirder than that, it's actually balanced it out like a race car. So at the back of the car, there's yet another wing that produces meaningful downforce. But all in all, it just shows you how serious engineers were to ensure that this is the most stable, best handling SUV at high speed. Check out the size of these bad boys. Now, of course, when you have that amount of serious performance on tap, you need a huge pair of brakes to rein it in and these do not disappoint. Aston Martin have engineered a set of carbon ceramic stoppers and they're clamped down by these massive six piston calipers. Now, while we're here, if you just catch a glimpse through there, you might be able to see the new dampers. Now, Aston Martin claim the adaptive dampers not only provide more comfort, they also provide better body control. There's some more lovely aeroness down the side. There's these little wheel arch extractors here. These side seals here keep the air detached along the sides and at the back of the car, there's an all new bumper and it actually has these vents here that look fake, but they're not. You can just see through them. Inside, there's been yet more detail changes that include the introduction of these ultra supportive 16 way sports seats and the redesigning of the lower console here. What do we have? So we now have a rotary dial to select the driver modes and we have some shortcut buttons for the dampers to slacken them off. And there's also one here for the sports exhaust. Yep, there's an all new sports exhaust and we like it loud. Now, originally when the DBX was launched, we were told that Aston Martin's 5.2 litre V12 would fit under the bonnet. But instead of introducing the big Bent 12, Aston Martin has upgraded the 4 litre V8 twin turbo, which was of course sourced from AMG. And they say that it was always the, in the plan. All the way back to 2015, they said there was gonna be a more powerful version of the AMG V8. And it makes a lot of sense. Because boy, do you not need any more power in this car. As well as the AMG V8, Aston Martin has also introduced an all new gearbox in the DBX 707 and it gets 
a nine speed Mercedes AMG source box, but it gets the wet clutch instead of the torque converter. What does that mean? Well, it means sharper, faster gear changes. And in sport mode on roads like this, boy, does it make the difference. Other changes following on for the introduction of the new transmission is a new wider carbon fiber prop shaft that apparently can cope with more torque. And there's also a new electronically controlled mechanical differential at the back that claims a 7% shorter final drive. But perhaps the most incredible thing engineers have achieved with the DBX 707 is it manages to maintain a degree of ride comfort that's at least a match for the normal DBX. I mean, on roads like this, it's just an absolute joy to hustle. Increasing steering sharpness, the steering rack itself now has stiffer bushing and mounting and has been completely recalibrated. The brakes, meanwhile, are, well, they're absolutely mighty. Engineers said when they're developing, the car had to withstand five high speed laps of the Nürburgring without any fade at all. And yeah, you never get anywhere near to come into the limit of their performance on the road. The noise of the active sports exhaust is also, well, it's an absolute joy, you can hear it. It's quite nice how the V8 burble sort of builds into a crescendo rather than barking like an AMG model. But again, what wins us over behind the wheel of the DBX 707 is it's just, oh, it's composure. The way it's just completely unflappable by nasty mid-corner bumps, changes in surfaces. It feels like it's almost made for Australian roads like ours. I mean, on roads like this, you'd have really sweaty palms driving a Lamborghini Urus. But in the DBX 707, it just seems to soak up the abuse. So what don't we like about the DBX 707? Well, it's not cheap, but we'll come to that later. Other things include the infotainment system that's still well past its best. This is last generation Mercedes tech and it, it has no place in a sort of, you know, expensive luxury SUV. But that's kind of it. I mean, I even buy into the looks of the 707 and I was never that much of a big fan of the DBX, but I think the revisions they've done to this car really, really does smarten it up. It, it has that visual aggression that the old car kind of needed. And perhaps the other final big thumbs down for cars like this is it's ferocious thirst. I mean, this thing just drinks through the fuel. I mean, I think we got 300 kilometers out of its last tank of fuel. That's outrageous. So where the DBX 707 scores is the fact that it blends this stupendous pace. It blends this finely balanced handling for an SUV with levels of comfort that are akin to the standard version. I mean, this thing really is something you could use every single day of the week. And that's not something you can say about things like the Urus. It really does great in you sometimes, the ride quality and the fact that it's just such a full-on performance SUV. This car, this is a real sweetheart when you drive it slowly. When the DBX 707 arrives in Australia in the second half of 2022, it will cost $428,400. Now that is a whopping increase of $71,400 over the standard DBX. But you know what? I think it's worth every cent because you get a significant upgrade in performance without any of the usual benefits in terms of comfort. Aston Martin thinks that more than 60% of all future DBXs will be the 707 and we can understand why because it really is the top of the pile when it comes to supercar SUVs.